Hi folks, I'm Dieter Melhorn, and if you've ever wondered what a shad kill is and what effect it has on catfishing, stay tuned, we're going to talk about it. Alright, so what is a shad kill? Some people call it a winter kill. Uh, basically what happens is the water temperature drops. Uh, it, it happens in the winter time, uh, during the coldest part of the winter, and usually it's happening at the northern range of the shad population. Uh, some areas see it every year. Other areas like where I live in the Carolinas, we may only see it every four, five, six years when we get unseasonably cold temperatures. Basically what happens is the temperature goes from, water temperatures go from being in the mid 40s, upper 40s, down into the low 40s and into the 30s. Uh, especially once these temperatures start dropping into and holding in the 30s, shad start dying off. Uh, initially, this causes a feeding frenzy because there's a lot of fish flopping around, flailing around, fish feed. If you can get on it in the first 24 hours, you can catch some fish. Inactive fish become active. But generally what happens is, this drags on two, three, four, five days. And in those latter stages, it can be virtually impossible to catch fish because they're full. They've been eating, they've been gorging themselves on these dying shad that can't escape. So it can be very tough fishing and very challenging. And that's what I was facing on this trip to Eastern Tennessee. All right, folks, getting the uh, truck loaded up, heading out. Sorry about the audio trucks running. Uh, making a run down the lake. Uh, the shad kill is pretty widespread from what I'm hearing. So uh, I'm actually going to go over to Watts Bar today and uh, put in down the lake. Hopefully I can get in. Hopefully all the ice is gone. It should be. But uh, yeah, the uh, shad kill is pretty widespread. So uh, I'm going to just have to make some adjustments, see if I can find some fish and get away from this stuff. So we'll see what happens. Basically, I'm gonna start right here in the creek, uh, right here at the, uh, up from the marina, I'm gonna troll my way out. Uh, I don't expect to catch fish in here, but there's not a lot of birds. Uh, doesn't look like a big shad kill. I don't see anything on the top in here. Of course, it's probably already been eaten by now. The fish are laying there with their fat bellies, gorged, not eating. But uh, I'm going to drag out and uh, get out here in the bigger open water and see what that looks like, see what the fishing looks like. Oh, my goodness. It looks like a bite. That rod was almost moving like it was getting bit. It would be so exciting to catch a fish. All right, I'll give you a little tip here. If you fish with foam handle rods, like these big cat fever rods, fishing in the rain is a great day to clean your, clean your foam handles. Always look forward to it. You get good and wet and soaked. Everything gets loose. They're nice and clean. We get all the nastiness off. Alright, I can't tell if I'm rolling a tree limb down through here or a fish. It's real snaggy in here. Feels like a limb. I don't feel it shaking. It kind of gives some resistance, but these things, uh, I've seen people winch on some logs for hours. This is acting like a log. Normally when you put the weight on it, you'll feel a head shake. The only weird thing is it's going upstream. That's a fish. That's a fish. I don't think that fish knew it was hooked. Good fish, finally. I got to see some color a second ago. Just wanted to stay down. I don't 
like this colder water up at the top. There's some color. There's the sinker. Toad. Great fish. Yeah, that was a very interesting bite on that fish. Uh, it honestly felt like a limb that I was pulling in. Uh, there was no move to it, lift on it, no head shake. But I noticed it started swimming in the same direction as the boat. Limbs generally don't go in the same direction you're going with you. And uh, when I lifted up on it that last time, he realized he was hooked. That fish didn't even know he had a hook in his mouth. And uh, crazy, it was a good one. I'll take it. All right, so what I did in there, um, I drifted that creek a pretty good ways. That was the only bite I had. Uh, it was a great fish, so I'll take it. So I came out here to the main lake, see what this looks like. Uh, the good news is, there's a normal amount of birds out here. I see a few down this way, a few back over there. It's nowhere near like what it was on Loudon. So who knows? Uh, not marking as much bait as I did on Loudon, but that kind of goes with the shad kill. So uh, we'll see. There's some arches down here. Uh, just doing a little drift through here to see what we can get onto. A little prospecting, as I call it. I've got six rods on the bottom with Santee rigs, and I got two suspended straight down under the boat. So, uh, got some skipjack, and also got some gizzard jad. So, uh, just kind of seeing what you're hitting, and uh, we're going to drift this for a while. Try it, see what happens. Just sitting there getting ready to go live on YouTube, and I heard a splash, and it was my rod tip going in the water. One of the. Uh, suspended bait straight down under the boat folded over. And, uh, he ate that one. Let's see if it'll pull out. Yeah. Good fish. A lot of mud on them. Well as you can see folks, making the move to Watts Bar was a smart decision because I was on to some pretty good fish. I think we may have one on this bait. Real, real, real. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> Boom. Uh oh, I got another rod doing something odd. Swimming off. See that one? Might be doubled up here. Got a little double hookup action. Both of them on bottom rigs. I made a turn with the boat, started going back toward the channel edge, and that's where I got on some decent fish earlier. There he is. The belly on that little football. Stuffed. Little pigs. Little pigs. Nice one. Back in the water. Let's see what this other one's got on it. It was like about the same size fish. I had to do a little rod shuffle. I think I got everything clear now. This fish is staying down though. Another rod. Was it just wrapped up in something or not? Yep. Good fish, good fish. He's wrapped in some other stuff. In the net. Take that one. 
worked hard for that one. That's two good ones today. Great fish. Folks, I hope you find this video informative. I uh, hope you learned something from it. So if you like the video, please consider subscribing to my channel. And also hit that little bell symbol so you'll be notified when any new videos come out. We look forward to seeing you on the water.